human being, the model that I would look at is in Cuba, where you walk into a health care facility, there are no insurance cards, there's no money being changed hands, you get health care. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that we need to do. Medicare is under attack by both uh, Obamacare and, uh, uh, and what the Republicans are putting forward. $716 billion, it, th that's right. But that's, uh, that's an attack on, uh, on the access to Medicare. But the voucher system is as well. Uh, so we need to recognize that this whole discussion uh, is not about how to get health care to people, but how to maintain the profits of the insurance companies, the pharmaceutical companies, and we pay the price as working people. All right, thank you very much, David. On to our next question, gentlemen. The arithmetic tells us that it will be impossible to correct our exploding national debt problems unless we address the 70,000-page tax code, Social Security, Medicare, and defense spending. Now, specifically and in some detail, what would each of you do to address each of these key areas? And we'll start this round of questioning with Scott Batcher. Let's, we're on uh, this question now, Congressman. Uh, Scott Batcher, you, you get to go first. Um, you know, where, where we're at today is, is um, you know, we, we have to take a look at, at, at how we've gotten here, and we've gotten here in, in so many different ways that nobody's keeping track of how we've gotten here. What we have to do is, you know, when we talk about the deficit, deficit can be reduced very quickly. We just have to stop spending. And there's lots of different areas that we can reduce the budget. We talk about, um, you just talked about the health care bill that was passed and and all the different things that are going to go into that health care bill and how costs are going up for individual employers and so forth because of the passing of this bill. And what we need to do is we need to start to take a look at stop passing legislation. We need to simplify things. We need to use the KISS program, the Keep It Simple Stupid program, in order to be able to get back to where we need to go. And what we need to do is we need to go back over all these laws we've passed and, and abolish them or update them so it meets current time for where we are today. So many of our laws are so old that they don't even apply to today's world. And we need to go back and readdress those things and work at that other than everything else. All right, thank you very much, Scott. And now we go to Congressman Tom Latham. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, you know, this is the issue I think that everyone is concerned about. Iowans hate debt, uh, and the spending in Washington has is, is been out of control. You look at the last four years when you had a uh, $700 billion Wall Street bailout, uh, when you look at the uh, $831 billion stimulus package, uh, when you look at the health care bill that's going to spend an additional over $2 trillion, and you wonder how we got here. People talk about amnesia, but those are the votes, uh, certainly Congressman Boswell with uh, President Obama that have voted for that have gotten dug uh, us into this hole. What we have to do is look at everything in the federal budget. We've got to address uh, not only the discretionary portion of the budget, which is about a third of it, but also all the mandatory spending. Uh, that, uh, you know, and, and, and also the revenue side. Certainly, uh, we've got to have a tax code that is simpler, fair, that will actually generate more revenue because uh, it will create economic activity, have this economy grow, have people, <clears throat> excuse me, actually paying into the uh, into the system, whether it be Social Security, whether it be Medicare, but that's how we really, the, the best way to get out of debt is to have a strong, vibrant economy, and we'll never do it with uh, higher taxes or more regulations. All right. Go to David Rosenfeld. David? The discussion about the national debt, about deficit spending, is really just a cover for a discussion about how to begin to carry out the tax on things that working people have won and struggle, things that we depend upon. Uh, the, uh, and it's interesting that, uh, uh, that the moderator of the debate would raise questions like tax code Medicare, but the one thing that never gets raised in this discussion that seems to be sacrosanct, which actually represents 15% of the federal budget, is the interest that is paid to the bondholders. That is off the table. But $400 billion a year going into the pockets of the wealthy bondholders, both in this country and other countries around the world, uh, is uh, that, that's got to be guaranteed at all costs. 
cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, raising taxes, that's all on the table. Well, I think we need to turn this discussion around and talk about what's genuinely in the interest of the working class and stop discussing uh, the question of, of how Social Security, Medicare, social programs that workers and farmers depend upon can be cut, uh, but how we're going to guarantee those things and expand them uh, and, and that that needs to be the real discussion that we have and that we need to put millions of people to work. I'm sure we're going to talk about jobs, uh, uh, but that, uh, that's going to create tremendous value as well. All right. Thank you very much, David. And uh, finally, in this question, we go to Congressman Leonard Boswell. <coughs> Mike, I apologize for not getting here for the brief before we started, but we're not going to be able to address when untrue statements are made about uh, Medicare and uh, so on. I would think it would People want to hear about that. Well, the rules are that we can't ask each other, each of the candidates, well, questions. I, well, I guess, maybe I could address it to you, but, you know, Mr. Latham mentioned me. Well, he voted for the Ryan budget twice for that 716 himself. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned, David, with the voucher system, I would guess that we probably ought to talk about that a little bit. But back to your question, so I, I want to play by the rules here, so I want to do that. But uh, the, the, the things I've said are just not so. If you want to talk to Iowa Health or Mercy or regional hospitals, but back to what we need to do about this debt and deficit. You know, there's uh, there's just been all this uh, uh, talk and fluff uh, about how to do things and talk about it, but knowing full well it would not go forward. And yes, we have to look at the possibility of how to reduce and have efficiencies. And yes, I think we have to consider revenues as well. And so it's a matter of trying to have some balance on it. And, uh, you know, Simpson Bowles offered up something, uh, a version of it, if you will, uh, that we did get a chance to vote on. Uh, there would be a starting process, and we ought to go there and put daylight on it and get out there and talk about doing it that way. All right. Thanks a lot, Leonard. Time now for our next question, and it concerns the Farm Bill, which is another hot topic of discussion right now, particularly here in KMA land. The question, gentlemen, is... Do you support the current farm bill that is stalled in Congress? If so, why? If not, what changes would you propose? And this time, uh, Congressman Tom Latham, you go first. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, in general, yes. Uh, the way the farm bill came out of committee, uh, I think it recognizes the fact that farmers are willing to contribute as far as deficit reduction, doing away with the direct payments, reforming the countercyclical programs, uh, but they absolutely need some way to manage their risk. Uh, in agriculture data, there's a massive investment. They have to have the means uh, through crop insurance to make sure that, that uh, those tools are there for them. Uh, it is extremely frustrating to me that and a failure, I think, of our own leadership that that bill has not come to the floor. I've gone to the point of signing on Democrat to discharge petition uh, to get the bill to come to the floor because we need to have that bill on the floor of the House. We need to debate it, uh, have amendments if necessary, and then uh, get to conference with the Senate so that we can actually get this done so that we do provide certainty for the farmers out there for next year for them to be able to plan. Uh, a concern I have is that, you know, some people are talking about splitting off the farm section from the uh, feeding programs, uh, which are about 80 percent of any farm bill. Uh, but uh, to me, that breaks uh, what has been an alliance between urban and rural people uh, to move forward. They have to understand that uh, the uh, agriculture and urban are very tied together. We produce the food. Urban areas through food stamps, all of those programs obviously utilize the, the food that we produce. So we've got to keep that bond together. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much, Congressman. And now we go to David Rosenfeld. David? The problem with the Farm Bill, as has been true historically with the Farm Bills, is that they're designed to really bolster and support the big capitalist farmers at the expense of working farmers. Working farmers are exploited producers on the land. Workers in the cities and in the factories are exploited producers in a different way. We're, we're wage slaves, farmers are debt slaves. But we're exploited by the same forces, the big capitalist enterprises, the monopolies, the banks. And w what we need is a fighting alliance of working farmers and workers. Uh, and we have a common interest in defending ourselves against the consequences of the capitalist economic crisis. 
there are natural disasters that, that uh, tremendously impact us. But in this system, these natural disasters become social catastrophes, man-made catastrophes like the drought. Uh, dairy farmers, livestock farmers have been hit tremendously hard this year by the drought, by the rise of, of corn prices. I think that we need a moratorium on foreclosures. Insurance is not the, the answer for farmers, but a government guaranteed income that covers the cost of production for farmers. These are things that, that all working people have a, uh, an interest in fighting for, and it will be part of building a movement that can actually reorder this society. All right, thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, now we go to Congressman Leonard Boswell. Right? Well, I'm on the Ag Committee, and we did bring out a, a bipartisan bill from the Ag Committee. The Senate passed a bill back in June from committee. It came to the floor. Uh, to the floor. They passed it there, and uh, uh, that would be, uh, I think, a, a workable bill for sure. But the process requires that both committees act, and we agree with uh, Mr. Latham. Leadership has failed to get the floor, and I don't know why. If they're afraid of their far right or what, I don't know, but I know that uh, uh, Ranking Member Congressman Peterson from Minnesota was the chair of the last farm bill, uh, has worked hard to kind of take account, and I helped do that, and probably he, think, he thinks there might be a hundred votes on the Democratic side to make that happen. We've got to remember, those of you listening out there, that we farmers, and I say we, <clears throat> uh, are a very small percentage population. And, uh, and I, the occasion, I agree with Mr. Latham. We, we've got to work with our urban friends. And this is to them a nutrition bill. To us, it's a farm production bill. Farmers have got to have access to uh, federal crop insurance that's available, it's affordable, and usable. And uh, the farm bill will provide that. And the urban people as well have a vested interest because they, they have to eat and they get safe, affordable, the least expensive food in the world. They get something back for their investment on it that they share in. And we have to work together. Otherwise, uh, we'll get outnumbered. And uh, we, we don't want that to happen to this nation. All right. Thank you very much, Congressman. And uh, lastly, in this question, we go to Scott Thatcher. Uh, thank you. Um, I have not read the the total bill here, but one of the, one of the uh, problems that I have with Congress is we continue to keep passing bill over bill. I mean, if we looked at it, probably right now we have hundreds of farm bills that are uh, within within the government. And what we need to do, as I had mentioned earlier, is that we need to go back and refine all those other um, farm bills and start taking out things of uh, in nature that have hurt the farmers and start from scratch. I think that uh, a lot of things that we do is we keep building and putting minutia on top of things that we currently have, and we have to stop doing that. Um, I've talked with many of farmers, and we have already programs in place that help protect the farmers. Uh, but yet, uh, to earlier comments by Ms. Roosevelt, we do have too many farm bills that support the uh, mega farm instead of the small family farmer. And we need to get back to the basics, and we need to take a look at what we really need to do to make farming a, a um, successful business in the United States. All right. Thank you very much, Scott. Our next question concerns jobs. And uh, the question is, with the current U.S. unemployment rate at 7.8%, what measures would you support to create jobs in this country? And uh, we'll start this round of questioning with David Rosenfeld. Well, I think we all agree that this is a huge question. In fact, uh, you can't, uh, it's like every other word out of a politician's mouth these days is jobs. But what's striking about it is that none of them, Obama, Brian, uh, my opponents in this race, none of them have a plan that actually puts people to work. We have 17 million people out of work. We've got 45 million people below the poverty line. What we need is a fight, a fight against this capitalist government, but a fight to force that government to put millions and millions of people to work. That's what we need. There's tremendous social needs when we talk about infrastructure, bridges, schools, when we talk about child care, talk about services that people need. Things need to be staffed. Things need to be built. We've got millions and millions of people without jobs in this country. That's The, the solution is a jobs program that puts millions of people to work, at union scale wages, and that's what we need to fight for immediately. Uh, and it's in the course of that fight that working people will begin to get the confidence that we have uh, in ourselves and our collective power. 
Uh, and we can draw on the strengths of previous movements, like the black struggle in this country, that give us an example about where we need to go. Uh, but it's going to be through solidarity, and it's going to be through struggle, and it's not going to be through expecting uh, 